Today, we're live from London with our newly appointed head of data science and analytics, Sam Chanaranda. Sit tight, we'll be live from London shortly. Today, we're live from London with our newly appointed head of data science and analytics, Sam Chanaranda. Sam, you've been at J.P. Morgan for almost two decades. What's the biggest change you've seen in the investment bank since you joined? Uh, apart from me getting older, uh, what I'll start off by saying is what hasn't changed, and that's the people. You know, we're very fortunate to have some highly talented people who are a genuine pleasure to be around and all have the same goal of wanting to serve clients. And as a result of that, what has changed most is probably the use of our technology in order to serve those clients. We're expected to understand markets better than we've ever understood markets. We're expected to process trades faster and more accurately than we've ever processed trades. We're supposed to get information in front of our clients better than ever before. And that use of that technology has probably been the biggest advancement that we've seen over the last two decades. And I think that will continue uh, as, we, as we move forward. Now, in your new role, what's the biggest change that you're hoping to make as the head of data science and analytics? The biggest change is actually not a change. It's actually turned data science and analytics into a natural part of the way we do business. And, you know, we use all these terms about the way we work, etc. And Sunoke has these big programs that we uh, have put in place for that. But it's now making all of this stuff embedded inside the business, having subject matter experts who understand how to use some of the technologies that we're talking about here and turn it into part of, pe part of people's day, uh, daily lives. And what does that mean? Well, first of all, it's making sure that we have a coherent set of problem statements and actually making sure that we understand what our clients and our internal clients need. Number two is making sure that we have the data that is uh, available to actually do some of this analysis. And when I, mean, when I talk about data, that's probably our biggest challenge today. And we're going to be working a lot with the Chief Data Office um, and technology to make sure that portion is correct. And then on top of that, understanding how when a problem is simple, to deliver a simple solution. Because oh, you can overcomplicate this world very, very quickly. And if a simple regression is needed, that's what we will deliver. Get the trust of the clients and then move this analysis on to the next level. That's what we're trying to achieve, make sure that we can help the bank service clients into the, next, uh, uh, into the next era and make sure that we are still the number one investment bank for clients to come to. So one of your main responsibilities, among others, is to lead JP Morgan's strategy to deploy machine learning and data science. Um, how do you think about that complex task in such a big organization? Well, first of all, it's about the people we have in place and, uh, some, of the pe and uh, some of the people involved in some of these data science, data engineering, data management uh, uh, tasks. And the first point of this is having a coherent set of problem statements, making sure that we go through all of our businesses and understand what they require. Obviously, those problem statements can evolve over time, they can actually, they, and they should change as we learn more about our businesses. And then start looking at what techniques can be used against the, the amounts of data that we have available to solve these problems and actually keep it simple. If regression is needed, we will deliver regression. But if we need more complex machine learning, we will start to employ that. But the firm, first and foremost is get the trust of the underlying customer. And you know, initially, those statements are all aimed at internal customers before we start broadening out towards more external customers. And then we also have to be cognizant that we have to partner with the fintechs and the academia in this space if we're going to stay relevant as well, because we need to continue to evolve our knowledge on that side. So we're going to have a very big program on that. But the whole point about it is actually go back to the simple diagram what data science really is. It's a problem statement that leads to a requirement of data. And then if you don't have the data, use the data engineering, data management folk to help you get that data. Make sure you, make sure you uh, go back to the problem and say, yes, I've got that data. Then onto the technique, is that regression, is that machine learning, is that reinforcement learning? And then check that you have the data for that. And then ultimately do experiments and deploy but all the time have those feedback loops. And that's some of the stuff that we need to get our people better trained in. And that, that will happen as we embed some more of these uh, data science and quantitative research people further into the businesses. So what are some of the other areas that you think could benefit from sort of these data solutions, machine learning, or AI? Well, the first thing I think is, it's very simple to say, the markets businesses are ones that probably uh, benefit the most and benefit very quickly. And we've had exa successful examples such as the uh, machine learning that we put in place in the equity execution side of the business. Um, 
we can always come up with new techniques within that world to think about how we serve our clients better, the who to call list, who we can think of, who, who are the right clients to target for, for particular products or services. Then we can also think about pricing of all these instruments. But in reality, if we take those forward and think about the, uh, the customer side of things, which customers we want to work better with, treasury services, custody and fund services, all very applicable candidates to that. And then finally, understanding the process, workflow and so forth, will do really well uh, within our uh, CAO organisation in tech and ops. Because the more efficient that we can make those through some of these techniques, the better service we'll be able to provide clients and ultimately make a more efficient organisation and have people working on value-add tasks instead of the more mundane, process orientated tasks. Yeah, yeah, so don't be afraid of it. Embrace it. Exactly. Help you it's part of good change. Yeah, yeah. Sam, how do you view JP Morgan's ability to innovate? What are our biggest challenges and what do you think we do right? I think we have an incredible bunch of people within the firm who are all innovating very well and their skills are incredible. Unfortunately, our record of productionization of some of that innovation is a little bit more challenging. And what that means is we have to provide frameworks and sandboxes for people to play within so they know, know the rules by which we want to work. Uh, and that's by no means putting straitjackets around people, but just giving them uh, an area in which they know and path towards productionization a little bit more efficiently than previous. And also partner with things like our in-residence programs, which is an excellent program, by the way, and then help that augment some of their work as we go forward, because the end results will be significantly better. And you know, by employing all of that, we will get to a different point in our innovation cycle, which I'm hoping I'll be part of. Yeah, we just spoke to our in-residence program earlier this week, actually, and I really encourage everybody to tune in for that one. That was a good, good session. Um, so if you weren't leading data science and analytics at JP Morgan, what would you be doing right now? Probably still what I'm doing today, i.e. my day job of trading. Uh, I haven't quite moved over to the data science role and that will be happening in the next, um, yeah, next couple of months. Uh, but I think the other question would be, if I wasn't inside the bank, then I think it would be teaching or sustainable finance. You and I actually have often spoke about how we never thought that we would end up in banking and here we are and we've both been in these jobs for a while now. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you got here to where you are today? Yeah, I, I am a complete accidental banker. <laughs> I had no idea that I'd ever be inside an, inside an investment bank. But I think the career trajectory, well, I actually, to be honest, I thought I was going to be a music star. And uh, while I was at university, I uh, attempted really hard to have a career in uh, house music and techno music and had a brilliant time of it. But unfortunately, uh, I probably wasn't as good as it as I thought I was. <laughs> and so I had to get a job in the middle office of Chase Manhattan at the time, uh, as you say, two decades ago, to uh, earn some money. And uh, you know, I realized this career suited me. I moved from uh, the middle office of uh, Chase, uh, doing P&L reports for traders, ultimately onto the trading desk, uh, to ultimately leading teams within the tr trading environment. Uh, and being involved, very involved in the whole technology aspect of what we do today. And then, as of very recently, got asked to move into the whole new data science world uh, to lead that more from a commercial a aspect to see if we can make this more applicable to the firm. That's one uh, of the nice things. Yeah. Oh. So a complete accident. Uh, but one of the things that's really good about the firm is it shows it has mobility. That is one of the nice things. You can constantly change what you're doing here. There's so many different options for people who work here to try new things. and. So, you know, we think about it, we have 40,000 technologists here at JP Morgan, and I'm sure many of them never thought that they would end up working in a bank. What would you say to somebody who's just starting out their career in fintech? Um, what would you, advice would you give to them? Let's say fintech and uh, our traditional technologies as well is the breadth of this company is huge. I'm not even talking about the CCB and asset management, just the CIB. The problems that we face are everything from payments to cutting edge cyber, uh, to algo trading, to even so simple things so, such as search. Um, we're employing all sorts of good techniques from machine learning to reinforcement learning to NLP to use some of the uh, buzzwords that are there. But again, being applied in a real aspect of a real business that is doing A to, Z, A to B and A to Z business with the client, all the way from capital raising, all the way through to support of long-term business goals. And you know, when you're working for a fintech or a uh, within internal technology, you realise there's a lot of application and a lot of practical application that you get to, you get to work towards. And I think that's incredibly powerful to be involved in. So. What, what do you think about, what's your strategy for developing the best talent and the best team? We can all have a lot of book smart talent. 
Um, and there is a lot of it around you know, there's some great university courses and things like that. But what I need to do when I'm building teams is have a group of people who really get to know their customers. First of all, you know, uh, have a direction that that is the way to work. Start off with the problem statements, make sure those problem statements are answerable, and then work with like-minded individuals, and that's part of the creation of the team, and part of the art of creating a team is finding those like-minded indiv individuals that frankly you'll spend a lot of hours of the day with, so you've got to get on with them. <laughs> and then make sure that they are working with um, defined projects and defined outcomes that they feel recognised for. And that recognition is very important, and that helps breed a very good team culture. The other thing that we need to make sure in that team culture is make sure it's open and collaborative. And one of the things I really want to promote in the new teams that I run is have very robust peer review type of uh, structures where people feel safe to challenge each other and thereby hopefully deliver a really good result for the end client. Okay, so my last long question for you is I heard a rumor that you have an affinity for vinyl records. So I'm just curious, are there any other obsessions that you think will outlive this digital revolution, um, kind of like analog? No, well, not just a rumor on vinyl, it's actually true. I'm a, I love vinyl, I, I, I believe it's gonna be here to stay forever, and I think I've been proven right as well with all the recent sales records. Now, the other one I think is books, old school books. I think there's still nothing like turning pages and reading through those, and actually, then I'll take myself back to children's books I don't think you'll ever get the, the beauty of watching a child p p pick up their first pop-up book and read those, and then that was never re replicated by technology. Sam, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Jane. All right, Sam, now we're going to move into the rapid-fire questions. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. You just say the first thing that comes to mind, okay? Ready? Done. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Good answer. Football or American football? Well, I'm from London, so it's got to be football. Right. Smart homes or self-driving cars? Smart homes. Right. Voice recognition or chatbots? Voice recognition. All right. Podcasts or TV shows? TV shows. Social media live stream or streaming on demand? Streaming on demand. Are you a binge watcher? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and finally, what's the must-have gadget for this holiday season? A high-quality Bluetooth speaker. Good answer. Sam, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Jen. Thanks for joining us. Tune in tomorrow, where we'll be live from New York City with more of our tech experts.